Hey there, so once again this is your host Dart and welcome to another episode. So you are interested in virtual machines, right? So you may be wondering what are virtual machines best used for. So I can think of a couple of usual examples, right? Uh, people tend to need uh, to run software that can only run on a different operating system than they are uh, mostly or currently using. So for example, you're on Linux and you need to run some uh, special Windows software and you may be you, you can uh, use virtual machines to run that software, right? You can install Windows in a virtual machine and you can run software inside that virtual machine. Another use case would be maybe uh, using old software that can only run on old uh, operating systems, uh, whether that's an old version of Linux or old version of Windows or some other combination. And maybe you want to test some um, software that uh, you don't really trust and you want to see how it behaves or, or maybe just you want to run it in a uh, in a special compartment that cannot uh, hurt your host PC so that would also be a good use case for a virtual machine right and there may there may be some other uh, use cases but that's the um, kind of a roundup uh, what you could do as, a, as in, in in the beginning right before you find your own reasons why you want to run a virtual machine so another thing you may want to know is that virtual machines have two main differences if i can put it that way uh, we have a uh, bare metal hypervisors bare metal uh, bare metal virtual machines and we have a uh, hosted ones so uh bare metal ones are those that run very close to your uh, host operating system to your cpu and they're they are very fast and hosted ones are kind of like emulated and they are slower uh, for example in uh, windows world uh, vmware uh, virtual machine is very popular because uh, they have a version that's called vmware player that one is free for personal use and many people use it uh, that one is hosted one it's fairly slow but it's usable and fairly popular right um, on linux um, the most obvious uh, virtual machine is kernel virtual machine kvm it's uh, basically built into the linux kernel it's a bare metal hypervisor and this is uh, something that i'm going to show you today so um, i think we could uh, get down to business and um, see how it installs on debian okay so what i did here is um, searched for the instructions how to install it I already know this web page, so I'm going to skip this introduction. And how to install it. Okay. Let's copy this. Paste it here. This is pretty much all that you need to install it right now, and it will pull all the packages that you need. Just press enter. It will download now on my machine. Okay. So the installation is finished. Um, there is one more thing that you want to install. Uh, at least I would recommend it. Virt Manager. It will pull some other packages. This is the GUI that you need. Okay, that's installed as well. In order to manage virtual machine as regular user, you will need to add your user to the... Um, uh, libvirt group on your uh, operating system so let's do that add user uh, libvirt is it now let's go to the other tab and see if i can run um, virt manager from here yeah, can. Okay, let's give it a second to connect to my uh, host. Okay. I believe uh, that we are connected. So we have a create new virtual machine here. 
you can pick the localist navigation media. Uh, this is a recommended way. You can pick arch arch architecture here, but let's let's not tamper with this right now. Okay, let's pick a local directory. Just go to your um, folder where you have your operating system ISO image uh, downloaded. You will find it here. Choose volume. Uh, it should usually detect automatically which operating system you are installing, but this is a fairly new one, so let's give it um, another source. This one, for example. It doesn't matter too much, but uh, pick something that's closest. Uh, the emulator may not have search permissions, so do you want to correct this now? Yes. Okay, so how much RAM do you need for this virtual machine? You can pick whatever you have freely available. The virtual machine that's hosted, uh, it will take a part of your um, memory from your PC. So whatever you give to the virtual machine, you will no longer have on your host machine. So make sure to have enough free RAM uh, to share to your, um, your machine. Uh, contrary to this, uh, CPUs, you can pick uh, how many you want because they will be shared. Uh, I will get back to this part a little bit later. Let's just leave it at 2 for now. Uh, how much your virtual drive will uh, be uh, sized? Let's, I don't know, leave it at default for now. It doesn't really matter at this point. Uh, the name of the machine, let's just call it Ubuntu. Uh, customize configuration before installation. Okay. Network, you can leave it at default uh, NAT. NAT means that your host machine will uh, give or borrow or lend, actually lend, your uh, he, its IP address to the uh, host machine, right? So the host machine will exit to the actual network uh, through the IP address of your host machine. So this is fine and uh, it is unlikely that you will need to change this in the beginning. The alternative to the uh, NAT is bridged networking and I will explain that in a different video. Virtual machine is not active. Uh, would you like to start the networking? Yes. Let's do that. Okay, so this is the uh, modification of our, our virtual machine. So what you want to change here, uh, you can leave this at default, CPUs, okay. Uh, copy host CPU configuration. Um, yeah, this is fine. Manual is set CPU topology. Okay, so how many sockets do you want? You you want one socket. You want, uh, for example, four cores or two cores. And how many threads do you want? Pick whatever you like. If you put uh, two and two, you will basically get a simple two core CPU with uh, two threads per core. Uh, this is this is fine. Um, unapply changes, yes, let's apply. Uh, you probably don't want shared memory. This is going to become too complex uh, in the beginning, so I suggest you leave it uh, at not shared with the host operating system for now. Okay, boot, uh, boot options. If you want this virtual machine to automatically start on your um, host system boot up, you can uh, choose so here. Uh, the boot menu, you can leave it like this. Uh, virtual disk, uh, you should uh, pick with uh, IO. This is the fastest one. Uh, CD-ROM emulation will uh, just use your ISO image to boot from that, so it will act as it is booting from a CD-ROM image, right? From the actual CD-ROM, but it's actually booting from the ISO image. Uh, CD-ROM um, bus can stay as it is. 
um, network card you can leave this at virt uh, io as well if you have any problems with network card compatibility you can switch it to e1000 this is intel card this is a highly compatible model um, display spice okay you can leave this at spice server as it is by default you can turn on opengl if you want i haven't had the, the use for that so far uh, sound card you can leave a default uh, console channel video okay this is uh, rather important uh, you want to leave this at qxl it, you, you will get best performance out of this on linux uh, virtual machine and on windows virtual machine but we'll get to the windows part later a usb you can leave at usb 3 uh, the redirector uh, this is uh this is when you will need to plug uh, like a usb stick into your virtual machine so by default you have two redirectors i will explain those uh, in a later video okay uh, we are pretty much done we can click beginning installation it will create our virtual machine and it's already booting from our cd-rom you press enter here And voila, it is starting our Ubuntu operating system installation. So this is uh, pretty much it for this video. I will not cover the whole uh, Ubuntu installation in this one, but in the next video, uh, if you have any requests on which operating system you want to see installed as a virtual machine and any tips around that, uh, do let me know in the comments uh, and I'll see you in the next video.